And we're back, just like that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. We're on to tech. We're on to tech. Oh, God, we have... We still got about two and a half hours. I think I, I think I flew through that one really quick. That, that one was only like an hour. Nature, there was a lot to talk about in nature. Storm, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. On attack, we have a blast chamber. We have a, a, a explosive machine. Damage your target. When you deal damage yourself, restart this buff. I, I love this. I love this so much. Ranglethor and me can attest that Rangleboom is a very fun meme deck that's like actually having a lot of potential out there. Tech... Now that we've got, and we'll come down to it, hammer down is in the time aspect. We have so many cards in tech that deal damage to us. Restarting this is ridiculously easy to do. And it's a machine card. Machine card has a lot of really fun aspects where you can even return machine cards. You can do stuff with machine cards. If they're removed, they get benefits and stuff like that. Where Blast Chamber, I, th I think it's like a, I'm going to give it a 3.5. It's right up there with the Elemental for Storm. Where Storm uh, did the 5 damage, if you laid a water card, you could restart it. Laying water in Storm is probably just as easy as tech dealing damage to yourself in any way, shape, or form. Um, that it, Because it's on the third corner, it deals 5. And then just dealing the damage to yourself to restart it. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal... You know, if this Once again, if this card does 10 damage on one card, that's already amazing. That's already insanely amazing. And if you keep restarting and all that stuff, if you, there's heroes... That literally your ability is deal one damage yourself, do something else. Like, you can restart it with a hero ability. That's nuts. This card, I think, is going to be a 3.5. I don't want to say it's a 4. It, it's borderlining 4 for me, but 3.5, I think, is really fine. Um, you're you're going to put this in certain decks. You're not going to put it in every deck. Um, but there are going to be certain decks that love this card. And it's not going to be a card that makes the deck. It's just going to be a card that really fits well in the deck. It's going to be a card that you play, and you're like, yeah, this fits well. It fits the synergy of the deck, the way the deck is working. Dealing damage myself, all that other fun stuff. It's not going to be a card that like you build the deck around. It, it fits in a, it fits in an already existing archetype, and it's going to be really fun to play. I think a 3.5 is perfectly fine for Blast Chamber. Kreebot. Corners 1 and 2, rotate this one step forward. When you play a Kreebot card, corner 3, damage to your target. I think this is going to be a really fun card. This is going to be an amazingly fun card. Playing Kreebot cards to deal 7 damage to your opponent... Pretty easy to do if you're playing it in a Kreeble deck. I don't see Kreebot being run in a robot deck. I see it being run in a Kreeble deck. Uh, and then there's a Kreeble card. Let's go into tech here. There's a Kreeble card that already exists called... Um, oh, God. It's a it's a mechanical card, too. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Unless it's a defend. It is. Careless Mechanic. It's a Kreeble card, guys. Look at that. Take one damage. Restart all your machine and robot buffs. Cool. So here's what happens. On this corner, I lay Careless Mechanic. I played a Kreeble card, so this will rotate, dealing 7 damage. Then this Kreeble card will activate. I'll take 1 damage, and I will restart Kreebot. That's really good. That's really good. I already had Careless Mechanic in a really fun robot deck that did some amazingly fun synergistic things. That just putting Kreebot in that deck is going to make that deck better. I think Kreebot is a really fun card. I think it's a three-star card. It's a solid card. Uh, it's it's going to be fun to play around with robots now that we finally have tech buff. Like, tech buff becomes a lot more viable. A lot of people are going to be start experimenting with all of the tech buffs that we have or have gotten or are getting. And Kreebot, I think, is going to be one that really takes off with how many Kreebot cards the tech had alone. Uh, now into Kreebot, we're just laying two Kreebot cards, gets to this thing, and there's a Kreebot card that literally just restarts robots. It just restarts the Kreebot over and over and over again. And being seven, being able to restart that seven, is really good. That's just really good, guys. Like, really good. I cannot explain that to you how really good that is. Kreebot, I think, is a three-star card for me. I like it a lot. Now we have the Makeshift Reactor. Uh, explosive location card. When any of your cards are discarded by a card effect, once again, location, mind you, put it in there. Uh, discarded by a card effect, store them under this card. When they are three stored, deal seven damage to your opponent, discard the top two cards of the deck, and expire this buff. We're seeing a lot of cards that, ex that you know, discard cards. Mind you, it, it's not catching specific families. It's not one of those, you know, store creeble cards into this. It's just whenever you discard a card, right? Just whenever you discard a card. Um, but it has to be discarded by a card effect. There are a lot of cards that we're seeing that discard cards through card effects lately. Mostly in Dread. There are some in Tech, too. And some in uh, you know Mountain as well. So it's not unheard of. It's not uncommon to find those cards and build it with this. Makeshift Reactor, I feel... I feel it's like a... Um, two 
2.5. I think it's a 2.5 one. Um, the reason because is it's going to fit in a certain type of deck. It's going to fit in a, you have to discard cards to do it. Um, so you have to build a deck around this card. So it's okay. Um, yeah, make sure if you're, it's like a two, 2.5 star card. There's cards already out there that existed. Like I said, Curse Grave is better than this one. It, it does it better. Um, this is only going to fit into that mill archetype if you want to run it. But then like seven damage, I would just do damage over discarding cards from my, de my opponent's deck. I don't know why you would want to deal damage, like that much damage while doing it too. Um, and then you have to discard your own cards to yourself. So I think Makeshift Reactor is, it might even just be a two-star card. Yes, it's a good card. Yes, it's a card that comes along with it, which we'll see next, that runs really good synergy with it. But that's a lot of work to put into seven damage. Skyrider synergy? I mean, yeah. Yeah. But then again, Skyrider, why would you not just run Cursed Grave? You get the cards back that you're discarding. Like, it, the the difference between that and Cursed Grave is milling your opponent or getting your cards back. And I would rather just get my cards back most of the time. With a, if I'm discarding them for that effect, I'd just much rather get my cards back. Like, that just feels better. Feels better to get my cards back. So, I would I would say this is a two-star card. Cursed Grave, I give three stars. This one, I just give, like, two. Maybe 2.5. I don't know. We will see. Creeble Racer. Awesome already. Explosive, creeble card, nailing it. Increase damage to other heroes by rotation. Rotate this one step backward when you play an explosive card. When this buff expires, take two damage and remove the buff to its right. But we have cards to get cards back. That's that's true. That's true. That's true, Jovi. You could mill a combo. I guess I guess to each its own. Um I know there are Right now, actually, you you could probably build a pretty decent uh, tech mill deck um, that runs the makeshift reactor, that runs the uh, pit. Uh, there's a combo that mills your opponent for two after dealing eight damage, and then there's the one where if you have a combo buff out, you get to mill your opponent for two. There, there's actually some pretty good mill in tech that I think now that we're going to be playing more buffs and more stuff like that and not go straight aggro all the time, Mill Tech has a not, has a chance of being viable, um, and if it does, yeah, then that card will be better. Um, but like I said, once again, it just it fits into that certain archetype. Probably only the mill is going to be better option. I'd st I'd still stick with my two. I'm still sticking with my two. Um, also comparing it to cards like Scrapworks Bruiser. One damage less, but it requires three cards to go under it for a specific condition to deal seven damage. You're not going to run it in aggro. It, it fits a certain build. Um, too many other good ideas for tech. Exactly, Jovi. And they've all been opened up thanks to Crazed Bomber getting the axe. Super excited about that. But yeah, Creable Racer. Uh, increased damage to other heroes. Awesome. Uh, Alchemy Lab is leaving and we're getting this in its place. Which is, A-OK, -okay, this is a Creeble card. Awesome. And then it rotates one step backwards and you play an Explosive card. This is going to be nuts for aggro. It's Explosive already. You put it out there and just, just keep playing Explosive Damaging cards. You put three of them out there, it's like Mario Kart. Just boom, boom, boom. Have them all just consistently stay on board while you're attacking, 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 attacking. And it just your opponent gets overwhelmed by your Creeble Racers. Yeah, this card is good. I like this card a lot. I think I'm going to give this card a four-star card. Um... It's just going to fit nice into a lot of archetypes. Uh, aggro. Even the Creeble Racer fitting into the, your, your new buff archetype as well. Could be really fun. Um, you could run this. I could see running this actually in a Overseer Tusk Rage deck that utilizes the new Forest buff to manipulate your board. So like, if you can't do anything properly... Creeble Racer, when it leaves play, because it eats the one to the right of this, you can manipulate your board real quick so it'll eat a buff, an explosive one that potentially would have dealt like five damage to you or something like that. That would have killed you. You'd eat it before it leaves. Um, but yeah, I, I think this card is really good. I think it's four star. It's going to fit into a lot of a lot of unique places. going to be a lot of fun to play around with and utilize. And it's going to be one of those cards that like you almost want to build the deck around it too um, that utilizes Creeble Racer, playing the explosive cards, restarting it manipulating the board so the one that it removes is potentially something that's better to be removed than it would be to let it expire and go off. So yeah, I think this card is really good. I think it's a really good card for tech alone. 
And it's going to fit into more than just aggro. It's going to fit into a lot of other archetypes. So four star for Creeble Racer. Now we get into the card that I was talking about called Giga Blender. Oh, so much water. So delicious. Giga Blender is a machine card. Already awesome. Uh, tech card, four healing. Four healing is perfectly fine. You may discard up to three cards to increase the healing by two for each card discarded. Now, it doesn't say like discard defend cards or discard certain type. It's just any cards, which makes this open ended, which means it's really good. So, this potentially could be a 10 healing card for a Giga Blender. And in certain cases in tech, that's pretty good. Healing for 10 off one action card that you don't need to be below 15 for, that's really good. Then add it with makeshift reactor. Those three go down here for seven damage. So you healed for 10, dealt seven damage, and milled your opponent for two. Like, those two are going to go hand in hand. Almost definitely. If not, Giga Blender is just going to go really well with Cursed Grave in a deck like... Uh, what's his face? Oh, the Dread Tech Hero. The Umbron Hero. General Carnage. Giga Blender goes really nice with General Carnage in that kind of archetype. Where it's just like, yeah, we have some really cool synergies now. Um, Giga Blender, I'm going to give a 3.5. Maybe even a 4 star. Um, that heal and getting a big spike heal. Tech has always had like probably some of the best healing too. It's got the Tyrax Fixer. It's got Tyrax... Uh... No, yeah, just Tyrax Fixer. No, what's the other one? Tyrax... Oh, I cannot think of it. It's... Fixer's the one that heals you for 70 or below 15, right? Or it's Fixer's something else. Because I know there's also that Tyrax that, like, copies the robot or machine uh, defend card that's on the top of your discard pile. Uh, emergency Systems is getting rotated out. But yeah, that was that was some of the most nuts healing, too. Uh, emergency Systems is getting rotated out. Or no, is it? Wait, hold on. Hold on. I don't think it is. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. No, it's leaving. Emergency system is leaving. Tyrax tuner? Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not here. It's not here in standard. We can look in classic. Yeah, emergency system is getting rotated out. Um, But yeah, they, they have probably the two best healing cards in the game right now. Um... Mostly because they're the ones you can splash into any other alignment and get 7 healing. The only one other than that was the Dusk Feeder in Astral, but you needed Solar to get the big healing. Like, this is 10 healing, the other one is 7 healing. You could build a pretty strong, like, stay alive deck to go for an OTK. And in tech, there is a lot of OTK. So, like, giving tech two huge healing cards could potentially be bad for tech. I don't know. It could lead tech down a road we don't want to see it go down with stall. But tech has been so aggro lately that maybe a change of pace is good. I don't know. Um. Oh, Tyrax Tune is the card I was thinking of. Okay, thank you, Monturtle. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got so much healing. I think Giga Blender is going to be a four-star card. Uh, it's going to fit in a deck outside of Makeshift Reactor. It's the card that makes Makeshift Reactor work better. Um, but at the same time, it's just it could be a spike ten healing. The cards you discard could be beneficial to being discarded. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I do think Giga Blender is going to see a really nice. Uh, home in a lot of decks um, that you can just, you know, discard cards to heal for 10, do things with tech, it's a machine card, so you can utilize the family as well. I think Giga Blender is going to be a four-star card. It's going to be one of those cards you're just like, healed for 10, for real, this is ridiculous. Creeble Reconstructed. So Creeble card, it's a mechanical card. Two damage, your last discarded card is a robot buff moving into play. Guys, Creebot. Creebot's pretty awesome, isn't it? Seven damage, have that thing rotate out. Creeble Reconstructor. Like, I could literally just see Creebot being a Creebot deck. You could build a deck around Creebot. They remove it. Like, no, 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 no. Reconstructor, put that thing back into play. Craze Mechanic, restart that thing. Just do a whole bunch of things with Creebot. Just have a fun Creebot deck. I like this card. I like this card a lot. Robots, especially. I had a lot of fun with robots, uh, with the buffs. Um, there is the Robot Launcher, which is a card that really was underutilized. But with, ro with Robot Launcher... Being able to throw the robot and then lay Creeble Reconstructor along with it to put that robot back into play. And then, yeah, deal four damage or whatever. The next turn, throw it, maybe reconstruct it back, put it back into play. Like, this card is going to make a lot of other cards work, and it's going to really help the robot family in a big way. I think this is a four-star card. 
Um, just because, like, the, the robots, mostly buff decks in tech, were never that strong to begin with because Craze Bomber was there. We can all decide that Craze Bomber leaving is the best thing tech has ever happened in, like, the start of Lightseekers. But because robots are really fun to do with, like, you know, removing your own robot to deal with stuff like that, um, uh, let those robot buffs expire, do a whole bunch of things with your board as robots. Like, robots are a lot of really fun, dynamic, really fun stuff to do. Or if your opponent removes them, just pop back into play. It becomes a geode hatchling for robots. That's really good. Creeble Reconstructor, being a Creeble card as well, is going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Uh, I said Giant Stopper. Actually, because this has burn, you cannot put it under Giant Stopper. Because with burn, you cannot store burn cards. You cannot store burn cards. So this does not work with Giant Stopper. Sadly, I wish it did. But sadly, does not. Or are you saying you can put it back into play with you can uh, put Giant Stomp back into play with it? Yeah, you can do that. Um, but yeah, it would only bring Giant Stomp back into play. It would not go under Giant Stomper, sadly, because it has burn. Uh, this card is a great card, and oh, and Giant Stomper with Creebot. Yes, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. You can you can bring it back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sorry, I was mis I was misunderstanding you, Jovi. My apologies. My apologies, man. Uh Rust Forge Assembly. This card I uh I got to reveal with uh Delivery Crab Man himself. Uh that Rust Forge Assembly, when you draw a machine card during your turn, you may reveal it, take one damage, and play it without consuming an action. This is really good. I think with this card, machines are gonna get a really big high tempo. Um because it has machine card and not like buff, anything machine wise that you draw, you can just go ahead and play. There's a lot of really fun machine cards that are like defend or attack cards that just like spike off. You, you pass your turn, take two damage, and then lay two cards for free without taking any actions. I think Rust Forge Assembly is going to be a probably a four star card, maybe three point five. I want to say three point five. It's it's only obviously going to be played in machine style decks, right? It's, it's going to be played in a very machine heavy deck. Um, but at the same time, it's going to be one of those like where. You want to build the deck where you're drawing a lot of cards to really get the benefit out of Rust Forge Assembly. You don't want to put, you don't want to continuously say pass draw, pass draw, and hope, and hope that Rust Forge Assembly gets you what you want. You want to play this in a way where you're drawing cards during your turn to lay these cards for free and do all that other stuff as well. A uh, good way to get out mech buffs with True Stone. That's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, Rust Forge Assembly. It's it's once again a consistent mechanical buff too um, for True Stone. Uh, and machine cards, uh, Colossi Cannon's a machine. Uh, we did just see that new uh, Fire Catapult that I gave like a one star. It's a machine card. Maybe Rust Forge Assembly really works well with True Stone. True Stone is a very heavy machine style deck that really works with this buff. You just pass draw, pass draw, and you flood your board with machines and have this one takeover for you. Rust Forge Assembly, I think, is like a three star card. It's really going to come in handy in those machine decks. And if you can get it to where like you... Uh, you lay it and then can like draw two cards or something like that. And those two are machine cards. You draw, say like an Umber and uh, Barkeep. You draw two cards. They're both machines. You take the two damage you already healed from two, two uh, you healed from the Umber and Barkeep. So you essentially break even and then lay two cards for free. That's really good. That's a really good turn swing. I think Rust Forge Assembly is going to be a really fun card. Um, I, th I don't think you build a deck around Assembly. I think you build a solid machine deck and then just put Assembly in it. Um, you're probably only going to want to run maybe two assemblies. I don't know. We might see three if it's that dependent on having those big swing turns with machines. But we'll have to see. We'll have to find out and see how it works. Um, for all I know, you probably run three just because you want to get this as soon as possible to really start building up tempo with your machines. Uh, yes, uh, Pacer Custom, I will be uploading these all. And yes, I did. Uh, you did miss Storm. We are on the tech right now. Um, so yeah, I will be uploading this to YouTube tomorrow when I get home. So uh, run three in case it's removed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, if this is all you run and the rest are machine cards, perfect. You can lay machine attack cards. You can lay machine defend, machine buff. Just run Rust Forge Assembly in a really solid machine deck and you are good to go. Um, but yeah, Mudsar, I would love... Final Ross Battle, good evening, hello, welcome, welcome. But yeah, I would love to build a, a True Stone deck that runs machines and have Rust Forge Assembly get in, like, the the Colossi Cannons and all that other fun stuff just for free after drawing them, and your opponent's just like, what did I just walk into? What is going on right now? And you're like, yeah, it's happening. 
Oh, it's happening. So yeah, Rust Forge Assembly, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Giant Stomper. Instead of discarding, store creeble cards under this card up to three. If three cards are stored, attack and discard the top card of your opponent's deck, or recipient's deck. I think Giant Stomper is going to be a lot of fun. I think this is a deck you actually build a Giant Stomper deck, um, and you run three Giant Stompers, and you just play it in a creeble heavy deck that runs Giant Stomper. Um... Because of that, I want to give this a four-star card. I want to give it a four-star card. The whole discard in the top card of your recipient's deck does not mean anything if you're dealing five and five. If you're doing that much damage, discarding the top part of your opponent is only like, oh, I hope I hit a combo. That's really it. Um, no, uh, Mud Turtle, the, the question he asks is, so wait, if you draw a card at the end of your turn uh, in the machine, can you play it? Yes. Because it's, it's, it's not saying like it has to be during your turn. It's if you draw it, you can play it for free. So you can play it at the end of your turn. You're drawing your two cards for your two missed actions. You can play those two cards. You can play them at the end of your turn. It's awesome. It's awesome. Final Ross Battle, this is the new Bumbler. Everything is the new Bumbler, man. Bumbler was amazing and you know it. But yeah, Giant Stomper, you build a deck around it. You build a deck around it. There's a lot of Creeple cards that just restart robots. There's a lot of Creeple cards that we've already had that just say, you know, put those robots back into play. Yeah, Giant Stomper, I think, could be a really fun deck that you play with Kreebles, especially with, with the new card that brings three Kreeble cards back. That you just keep bringing Giant Stomper back, you bring three Kreeble cards back, you just keep getting that Giant Stomper out. Um, I want to give it a four star. I want to give it a four star. It's it's a deck, it's a card you build the deck around, which is really fun. You build a tech heavy Kreeble deck with Giant Stomper in it. That could be really fun. It's a really fun thematic deck. I don't know how well it's going to be. To only deal like, yeah, attack ability, attack ability, attack ability, and then have to get the card back and get three cards, three creeble cards back under it. Um But it's a it's a fun idea. It's a really fun card. Um that I mean if however, if like if this is what your deck is based on, your opponent can remove it pretty easily. You control you pretty quickly and still kill you. So like you better have a good healing uh I mean this is where like you you lay giant stomper and then the next turn you giga blender discard three creeper cards under giant stomper right away and then attack ability. Yeah, you can careless mechanic. Like you just there's a whole bunch of things you can do with the giant stomper deck that I'm gonna I am going to have a blast building. It's kinda like the the Kreeba Lunist thing, where you Kreeba Lunist is a deck you build around and you build it specifically to make it so that it works as well as possible. Um, and with all the cards we're getting for Kreeble, especially that that uh, big feast that brings Kreeble cards back, yeah, the Kreeble deck with the Giant Stomper could be a viable thing. You just got to find a way to stay alive. And with Giga Blender healing you for 10, discarding Kreeble cards under this just to make Giant Stomper keep working, yeah, yeah, this Giant Stomper starting to feel a lot more plausible and a lot more viable to run. Could it be game-changing? I don't know. Could it be fun to play? You bet your butt it will be. I cannot wait to get my hand on Giant Stomper and just see what kind of fun things we can have basically building Voltron. It's Voltron. There's one in this hand, one in that hand, one in that hand. He will form the head, and together we will stomp out the Giants. I love it. Before we even say this card's name, everyone, can we please just you know, pour one out for our homie Craze Bomber and understand why this immediately gets the only six star rating in this set yes i did say six star rating finally we have a card that changes the game as we know it not just tech but changes the game okay okay go back to rust forge Mudsir, sure what's with what's, what? We're talking about Hammerdown, man. I want to go to Hammerdown. This card. Oh, does it say during your turn? Well, uh, uh, Mud Turtle, the end step is still during your turn. Because it's your end step. You're drawing cards during your end step. It's still your turn. If someone were to lay Ashwood Diva, then you would draw cards outside your turn. 
or would you know Shard of Gravis make you draw cards outside of your turn? Your end step is still your end step. So you still draw it on your turn. Yep. But guys, guys, hammer down Enforcer. Okay? First of all, no burn on this. Amazing. Bring it back. It belongs in the time slot where the buff removal should have been in the first place. It removes one with a conditional of two, no longer three. Does not require you to remove your own buffs either. Yes! Finally! Finally, finally, tech does not say, oh, I never want to run buffs to have the best buff removal in the game in explosive and also run all my attacks in explosive and why would I run anything outside of explosive? <sighs> in my opinion, this is probably one of the best new buff removals the game has to offer because the condition can be met by any class. It's not like it's a Pathfinder where you need a Lunar card to get its bonus effect, where it has to be good inside of Astral. Any class can take two damage and remove two buffs. Because it doesn't have burn with all the classes that require you or that allow you to bring stuff back from the discard pile, this is amazing. This card is amazing. This card is already better than Crystal Leech and Shadow Puppet and whatnot. It could just say remove two buffs, take two damage. Yeah, don't have burn, I'll take two all day. I'll bring that card back no matter what. Time is probably going to be one of the top ones that you splash into an order, specifically because this card does not have burn. <sighs> so now zero buff decks will be the meta? No. No, there will still be buff decks. There will still be buff decks. Uh, I mean, there's control, and control is still going to run buffs, but Hammer Down Enforcer is exactly what tech needs. It's exactly what tech needs. I think the damage could have even been increased to three, and we'd still be fine. We'd still do that, hands down. Um, yeah, tech tech needed something to make it viable to play buffs. However, what I do think, though, is that tech has probably some of the most board control I've seen in the entire game. It's got Fountain of Time, it's got C25 Combat Tech Warper, it's got Chrono Warper, and now it has Hammer Down Enforcer all within time. Because of that, Rylox is going to be the most annoying hero to go against. Because it's going to spin people's buffs out. It's going to return their buffs. It's going to do everything to people's buffs. Along with his ability, doing things to people's buffs. Like, he is going to be the most annoying hero to ever play against ever. And I think that Rylox is almost going to need to be nerfed. <laughs> like, this is so good. This is so good. Hammer on Enforcer is what the game needed. Yeah, even though Warp Toad is leaving. Exactly. Even though Warp Toad is leaving, we still have now four cards in time that manipulate our opponent's buffs. Like, do you need more? That's insane. That's insane. I, Jovi, I will not. I will not. Rylock is going to be the new top tier he hero outside of Magrock. Mind you, Magrock is still probably going to be stronger because Tentacles doesn't have corners that can be rotated. Just saying. Just saying. You can't Chrono Warper. You can't Fountain of Time a Tentacle. <sighs> Sulfuric Demise. Yep. No, Hammer Down Enforcer, like... Hammer Down Enforcer, guys, is is just, it's what Tech needed in the first place. But I do think now Tech still has the best buff removal in the game. I still think Tech has the best buff removal in the game. But now the fact that it doesn't require you to also remove your own buffs, Tech can expand its deck building to more buff-heavy stuff. And Tech has some of the best buffs in the game. It has some of the best buffs in the game. I've had so much fun playing buff Tech. Now with Hammer Down Enforcer, it can be a very viable strategy. And I do think that outside of nature, tech is now my favorite order. B by far. And Hammer Down Enforcer, like... Hammer Down Enforcer... If it's going to be a conditional two, like this, it should be something where it's not equally conditional outside of tech kind of how pathfinder is 
because because of that, this is the best buff removal in the game. I'm still saying it. Craze Bomber was the best buff removal in the game. Now Hammer Down Enforcer is. It's just the only difference. The only difference is that you can lay buffs in your deck. Whereas Craze Bomber, you didn't want to. With this card, you can lay buffs in your deck now. Hammer Down Enforcer, like, I... I would have liked it to almost be where it was like... It had the really nice tech thing where it almost like what, um... Where is... Where is the card I'm looking for? I'm thinking about. It's in time. Not soul. It kind of ran the same thing that uh, Scrap Scanner did, where it would remove one buff, but then you would have to, like, return, uh, like, I don't know, return an explosive buff to blow up another one, or return a time buff to rotate another buff to its final corner. Like, it had that conditional where it could meet two, but the second conditional, you really only met in... Or not, maybe not, uh, not in time. Maybe uh, mechanical or something like that. I don't know. Um, that way, just running time and time was not the best thing. Um, but like, make it so the conditional is only easy to meet if you run it in tech. Otherwise, it's just a one uh, remove one. Um, because Pathfinder is good because it's good in it's good in astral. It's outside of astral, not anywhere near as good. It's like a reckless spirit level good. It, you can still be brought back. It's fine. But you're not going to get two off of it unless you also run Lunar. With Hammer Down Enforcer, because you're not forced to run another alignment with it, and all you have to do is take two damage to remove two, and it doesn't have burn. That's where this card is still busted. That's where this card is still busted. And I think... Like, we, we got the buff removal tech, tech needed. But I don't think... The player base as a whole, and I think we'll find this out eventually as people see the value of Hammer Down Enforcer. It's not the one we deserved. It's it's the Batman thing. It's not the one we needed. It's the one we needed, but not the one we deserve. Because it's conditional increase can be increased by anyone. Can be increased by anyone. And that's where the secret power behind it lies. That's where this card is still busted. That's where this card is still busted. But otherwise, it's a six-star card, guys. And I cannot wait to get my hands on 70 million of these things and run tech all day and have tech be the number one order. It's still busted, but less busted. Exactly. It's still busted in the sense that it's the best buff removal in the game for tech. It's less busted in the sense that tech can now open up its variety to deck building. Anything but tentacles? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Reckless Tinkerer. We have another creeple card. You may restart a buff on the recipient for damage. Do we need more buff removal or buff manipulation in time for tech? Like, four damage, awesome. Creeble, awesome. And then the, you may restart a buff on the recipient. Sure. You can really mess around with your opponent's board with time. Like, that is just... Time doesn't need that much. It already had return buffs. It had rotate to the final corner. It had fountain of time. You could rotate things backward or forward. with Like, it, it, Reckless Tinker is just overkill. It's just overkill. I think Reckless Tinker should have been, like, four damage... Move your opponent's rightmost buff to the far left. Right? Should have been something like that. Like, manipulate the order of or of the buffs, not just restart it. We don't need more restarting. We don't need any more rotating the time. There's so much in time that does that. I mean, this this card gets a four-star. This card's going to be used a lot. It's four damage on a Kribo card in time. Yeah, already awesome. And then conditional, you can restart a buff on the recipient to mess up their whole thing. Yeah, Mountain Breaker. You can restart Mountain Breaker. Yeah, that's fine. Mage ship, Garsnail. You can restart a whole bunch of stuff. But, like, you, you could already do that stuff with Fountain of Time. You could return to their hand with C25 Combat Tech Warper. Like, you do, you do that in time with so many things. This one is just, it's overkill on what it does additional to the four damage. What I'm saying is they should have been, like, something to deal with, not the rotation, but maybe the placement of the board. Maybe the placement of the board.
a big combo hitting. Yeah, you could. Re- the thing is, you could restart a combo buff with this thing. You can restart a combo buff with this thing. For your opponents trying to wait and go down, you can restart a combo buff with it. This is a four-star card. This is nuts. And it's a creeble card, so you can put it under ro- under your uh, robot. Like, this card's going to have so much use. So much use. This is so good. I still think there, there's a card called Stasis Drone. Or Stasis Chamber within tech. That was really fun. It was a it was a time buff where your opponent's rightmost buff was dormant with a clunk of corners and it rotated every time your opponent laid a buff. So like the more buffs they laid, yeah, they were dormant when they came into play, but then Stasis Chamber would go out. I would love to see more of that in tech, where like your rightmost thing is dormant or they dealt with certain things being dormant or whatnot. Where I think, yeah, Reckless Tinker would be fine if it was just it manipulated the placement of the board. Not the entire board, like sto- like Nature's doing, but just like your opponent's rightmost buff goes to the far left. Or your opponent's far most left buff goes to the right. Have it be the first buff. Have it be the last buff that triggers. Something like that. I think I think that would be really fun. To just manipulate like one buff on the very edge of the corners. Something like that would be it would be unique for Reckless Tinker to do. Because I think time already has way too much stuff that deals with rotating your opponent's buffs backward and forward and everything like that. So you had it right the first time? Cool. Stasis strong? Yeah. I mean, I, I would love to see something like that in time that manipulated, you know, one buff on the board, just flop it around. But there's so many cards that just like, you know, restart, return, rotate forward, rotate backward. Like, time, yeah, we get we get the aspect of time. It's all rotating stuff. But this is starting to be overkill, guys. This is really overkill. Everything now does that. It's it's more or less of like, okay, do I want something that deals four damage? Or do I want something that deals three damage? Or want something that deals three healing? Like, what do I want with my opponent's buffs? Like, what? how do I want it? Treetop Tribunal. I mean, yeah, you can restart Treetop Tribunal. It's true. And there, there's so many things you can restart with it, but like... Reckless Tinkerer is now going to take the new place because it can restart combos. It can manipulate combos. Uh, you're probably going to run it over like... Maybe over Fountain of Time. Stuff like that. They should give us a card to move a combo card forward. No! If it's an opponent's card, then sure, maybe. But our own, that's busted. We already said Alara was a busted hero because she could do that like as a secondary thing. All right, we have Wormhole Scuttler, an insect time card. At the start of your turn, gain additional actions if you have a combo buff in play. Oh, that's true, Rocket Star. We do have a new time hero that can uh, rotate that. We do have a rotate uh, our combos one step forward. Um, I think this is really good. I think this is a really good card. Once again, it's an insect buff. So we're having more time cards that are insects uh, for buffs that the the high flusher can work on as well. So awesome for that. But then at the start of your turn, gain one additional action if you have a combo buff in play. Yeah, tech is starting to really utilize its combo buffs and its buffs in general. That wormhole scuttler, I think is going to be a really fun card. I think it's only going to be a three star. Maybe maybe even like a two point five. It's one of those cards that has such a stipulation where you have to have a combo buff in play. So utilize it well. You need to have one of your five cards. And if you have all five combo buffs, then that's how you do it with. Um, but with Wormhole Scuttler and all the really fun combo buffs that tech has, especially all the consistent ones, but don't rotate out or you have to remove them, that's where Wormhole Scuttler, I think, is going to really find its home. Um, that I want to give this... Uh, I'll say 2.5. I won't say 3, because it does require you to have a combo buff in play. So you're not going to, like, get the best benefit out of this every single time. But when you do, gaining additional actions is going to be awesome. And if you guys did not hear the Need More Buffs podcast, the new the new Tech Storm buff, combo buff, with Wormhole Scuttler is going to set up for some OTK turns. I can guarantee you it. Because what the, uh, if you guys don't know what that card does is it deals like four damage, and then you get to search your deck for two storm or tech or a hybrid of each uh, buffs and put those into play, right? You put them into play. Wormhole Scuttler says at the start of your turn, so before your buffs rotate out, that that combo buff that put those into play is a combo buff. So at the start of your turn, you get two additional actions before that combo buff rotates out. So you just set up a turn where now you have four actions to deal with. That's setting up for a potential OTK turn. Like, and it fits really well into 
into Time Jumper Rylox. It fits really well into him. That's so good. There's going to be a lot of really fun things to do with that combo alone and just with Wormhole Scuttler. The, the potential for this card is almost unseen, but you need the combo buffs. You need to be able to keep those combo buffs in place. So your opponent can read you really well and just remove your combo buffs, and then Wormhole Scuttler does nothing. But there's a lot of cards that just say return to combo buff. Return to combo buff. So it's it's going to be a more long-weighted game, but then if you're getting additional actions, you're setting up for that OTK turn. You're setting up for a big swing turn. So I'm okay with giving this um, a 2.5 to a 3. Um, somewhere between there. But yeah, I, I think this card is amazing. I think this card is amazing. Tech is going to be the seen as the most untapped potential the entire game has seen because everyone's like, Crazy Bomber, we, we, why would we lay buffs? And now Tech's like, wait, this is a buff? And it's like, yeah, we, do, we got that in Awakening. Like, we've had that for so long. Like, I didn't know because it wasn't a Tyrex Mercenary. What do you mean this is in Tech? Like, yeah, it's in Tech. Tech is awesome. Start playing buffs in Tech for frying out loud. Like, Wormhole Scuttler is nuts. I love Tech. I love everything it's doing. I'm so ready for the 8th. I'm so ready for it. Uh, really, it's tomorrow night here in the U.S. if speculation is true. Yeah, I mean, if if the update is going to go live when we get our, like, quest update, it's going to go live tomorrow at 7 p.m. for me. And I am super excited. I got to make sure my app is updated and everything like that. Uh, Creeble Stunt Double. It's a Creeble Time card. You may discard one Creeble card to draw two cards and deal three damage to your target. Yeah. Yeah, this card is really good. As we've already seen, there's a lot of cards that want us, like... You know, when you play a Creeble card. Cool, play a Creeble card. Store Creeble cards instead of discarding them. Awesome. This one legitimately is a Creeble card where you discard another Creeble card to draw two cards and deal three damage. This is really good. It's only going to be in a Creeble deck, so outside of that, I'm not really counting it. I'd say this gets a 3.5. Card draw is card draw. Amazing. Yes, you have to discard another Creeble card, so you can't just get it on your own. That's fine. The three damage is almost negligible. I would I would say you discard one Creeble card and this to draw two cards. With all the Creeble synergies that we're getting, with all the stuff that say store Creeble cards, discarding Creeble cards right now is almost better than playing them. If you can get rid of two Creeble cards in your hand in one fell swoop, there's a lot of cards that'll get a major benefit out of that as opposed to playing one after one. This, this I think it's a 3.5. It's it's really good. It fits really well into the, hey, I got to search through my deck, discard the Creeble cards that for some reason might not be doing the thing right now to just draw two cards and deal three damage to my opponent. I think this is really good. I cannot wait for Creeble Stunt Double. I cannot wait for all the tech stuff that's going to be utilized in. But this, yeah, this card is awesome. This card is amazingly fun, and I cannot wait for uh, Creebles and for tech alone. I mean, just time time alone, guys, is going to be probably the best one to splash in now. I I can guarantee you it. Um, maybe you aren't ever going to be behind in life. Maybe. Maybe. But, yeah, I mean, this deck, this card is really good. It's going to fit into a lot of really fun Creeble decks. Card draw for Creeble. Specific card draw for Creeble. It's it's just good. Discard those Creebles. Exactly. I mean, essentially, this is this is one card that does what Briam's ability does and just adds damage onto it. Just adds damage onto it. You discard one Creeble card to draw two cards. This card alone just does three damage. And then is that hero power in a card format. And it's a Creeble card, so you can get this card back with Creeble cards. You can do other things with it as well. Like, yeah. I, I think it's good. I think it's really good. Gyro Master. When any of your buffs are about to be removed by another hero, draw cards equal to the number of buffs being removed. Once again, time is probably, like, really good to have. I think this is a four-star card. This is a four-star card, and I, I want to say the Random Thoughts is the one that revealed this one. I was able to catch that one. And he gave a really good example of this. It's it's essentially like, hey, you put it down there. It's what Time Warden or Warden of Time did really well. It's replacing Warden of Time essentially. Where Warden of Time, if your buffs were being removed, you got to bring back a specific card, right? You got back to bring a specific card for that buff, and then Warden of Time went away. Warden of Time did its thing. What Gyro Master is doing is like, hey, with this out on the board, I really don't care about just spending all my actions to lay a buff, lay a buff, lay a buff, and then you know draw cards later. Because like, if you go wide on board, the worst thing it felt is if you go wide on board. Your opponent removed a two for one, and now you have an empty can. You go, oh, man, that felt really bad. No, if they remove your two buffs, you draw two cards. You you just refilled your hand. You just replenished the resources your opponents got rid of. 
And because of that, it doesn't feel bad to just lay buffs on board continuously and go wide because your opponent's going to give you card draw if they remove it. I think this is a four-star card, and because it's time, I think this is going to be one of the other cards that gets splashed into a lot of buff-heavy decks because card draw is card draw, guys. Obviously, if you get it late, it's not going to do anything because, you know, all their buff removal is gone. It's going to be a, a dead card. Um, but you want this kind of early to mid-game when your opponent hasn't blown other buff removal. You want to put it down. Really, I mean, card draw late in the game is bad anyway. You don't want to draw cards um, late in the game because then you'll go to empty deck check if you haven't started winning by that point. So, yeah, Gyro Master, you want early game. You want to get the benefit out of it as well. And the thing is, it doesn't have unique, which is really weird. So, like, if you laid two of them, they remove one buff, you draw two cards. If you stack Gyro Masters, this thing gets ridiculous card synergy. Uh, yes, Gyro, or Gyro Master, I, I think it's just a four-star card. It's really good. It's really beneficial. And it doesn't have burns, so you can bring it back. It's just, like, this, this will really make your opponent think, is that buff worth him drawing two cards? Is that buff worth him drawing two cards? And it's for every buff. So like if they crystal leech, you draw two, you draw a card for each buff. So you draw two cards. Not just one. Uh, which is a lot of the other buff removal stuff I did as well. So yeah, I, I love this card. I think it's amazing. And yeah, the, the art of the face, it's it's because the lighting is so dynamic. The lighting is so dynamic, you can get really good nice cast shadows, and the art on it is just amazing. I cannot say enough about the art. I would literally buy an art book for the Uprising set if they sold an art book. I would buy an art book for this. I would buy a lot of these art just for posters to hang on my wall, like to decorate my streaming room. I think that'd be amazing. Play Fusion, if you're thinking about selling art, now's the time. Matter Manipulation. When you deal damage to yourself, you may rotate one of your explosive buffs one step backward. First of all, it's a continuous combo buff, which I've been saying, combo buffs, man, for tech. Combo buffs for tech. Yes! This is awesome. When you lay an explosive... Or no, when you deal damage to yourself, rotate an explosive step one step backward. Yeah, that's amazingly good. This makes cards like, um, first of all, Hammer Down Enforcer even better. Yeah, I'll remove two buffs, deal two damage to myself, and rotate one of my buffs one step backward. Colossi Cannon is is going to be an amazing card in this. It's a it's a tech card, or it's a it's an explosive card. You wait till eleven, and then you like Hammer Down Enforcer, remove two buffs, rotate. Uh, the Colossi Cannon backward one, it deals two damage to you, so you can then rotate another card one step backward. Rotate one of your explosive buffs one step backward. That's really good. It, it'll keep, like, two buffs on board. Like, Matter Manipulation, I feel, is going to be a really strong buff, really utilized in a in a very kind of deal damage yourself kind of deck. I want to say this is going to be a four-star card. Maybe, no, 3.5. 3.5. I won't go four four. You do build a deck around this. Yes, it is a combo that really helps synergize the deck. It doesn't have burns, so you can get it back. Awesome. Um, but, like, it's not something that'll make or break a game. It's a combo that's like, hey, I'm going to get a lot of benefit out of this, but I need to build my board state up to the point where I get benefits out of this. It's not I get benefits out of this just for this card. It's this card helps my board state be in a better board state than what I wanted it to be. Helps all the cards synergize and work really well. Otherwise, like, your deck should still be doing its own thing. Matter Manipulation just makes it work better. Right? It just it fits into the deck that it wants to and makes it work better. It helps improve it. It's not you build a deck around this. It's you build a deck, then put this in to improve it. That's why I'm giving it a 3.5, not a 4. Um... Because if you are relying your entire stuff on this combo buff, then you're a bunch of action cards are like, oh man, this, like, what do I do now? It's kind of like how Hive Mind. I thought Hive Mind was a five star card. It's like a 3.5. It's it's nowhere near as good. You really need to build a deck around that card. You really need to have the hand to manipulate it with properly. Um, Breach the Veil is a five star card just because it's any any card you lay. Hive Mind has to be insects, which I found is not as easy to do anyway. But yeah, I feel like this is a 3.5 card. It's it's borderline up to four. But there are a lot of fun things you can do with it. There are a lot of really fun things you can do, especially now that we have Hammer Down that deals damage to yourself and removes buffs. It's so good. Mana Manipulation, guys. Look out for this card. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's a combo buff, which means you get a lot of those things that uh, synergize well with you. If you have a combo buff in play, do this other thing. Um, it says it may. Yeah, it, it may do it. Yeah, so like if, if you rotated the cannon backward, it dealt two damage to you, you would have to rotate the cannon all the way back to the first. And like, wow, that was just stupid. But yeah, because there's so many things in here that manipulate, uh, that like you deal damage to yourself, and they restart them, this goes really well in an Ambiguinotron deck. Yeah, I'll go ahead and deal da one damage to myself, rotate a buff backward, like, 
it just works really well. And the fact the fact here is it's explosive time. It's explosive time, which means it goes really well on Overseer Tusk Rage deck. So that once you have all your boards set, and then you like cards that you would want to rotate forward or backward, then you can use that forest card to manipulate your board so the buffs you want to rotate forward will do their thing, then you'll deal damage, then they'll restart. So like because of the mana manipulation, the combo cost is, it fits really well in the Tusk Rage, which fits really well into the forest action card that we already gave a five star to. It just, everything works out really well. Everything's combo payment really well indeed. It's it's just really cool. Um. Oh my god, you're absolutely right. It includes combos. It does not say explosive action buffs. It has explosive buffs. Wow. Yeah. Um. Never mind. This goes up to a four star. It goes up to a four star now. You can restart. You can rotate combo buffs backward by one. This is a four star. I forgot. It doesn't say. It does not say action. This is a four star combo. Four star combo for two cost. Matter manipulation is going to be nuts. Thank you very much for pointing that out, Joey. Thank you very much. Oh man, that's that's bonkers. Magnetic smash, damage your target. If your enemy has more health than you, you heal yourself for two. This is. It's like a one point five. It it's. Are we losing? Steel fortification. What's what combos are we losing for? Um, tech. Are we losing steel fortification? No, steel fortification is staying in. Like, the only reason I gave this the point five as opposed to like a one, is because mechanical is the healing. It is the defensive stuff. And if you're not going against someone who's putting a lot of pressure, you can at least toss those healing stuff for 9 damage. For 9 damage. So it's just like, I mean... Yeah. I mean, if like, like I said, if you're... Having the healing deal damage is good. Otherwise, yeah, 3 damage to target if, you're, if they have uh, more health. Then it's a 5-point swing. You heal yourself for 2. There's a lot of damage, damage yourself stuff as well. Um, yeah, mag magnetic smash. I mean, it's fine. It's okay. It's nine damage on a two cost combo over three turns. That's fine. The reason I like it is because it, you know, like I said, you can toss your healing if you don't need it for damage. You give it a two point five. That's fair. I mean, I might push it up to two, but I wouldn't go further than that. I think there are a lot of other better combos out there that you'd run over Magnetic Smash. I think it has its purposes, it has its uses, but if you're lower than your opponent's health, I wouldn't want to lay a combo to deal t for healing too. I would rather use that mechanical stuff to heal myself and not die. Um, or put up a, a Steelwork Fortification and get damage reduction so I don't die. Uh, having, like, laying a combo, if you're, if you're lower on health... You really only want to lay this when, like, you know your opponent doesn't have anything. They have a few bad turns, and you can get the full, like, 15-point swing. You can heal for two and deal three. But, like, if you're low on health, your opponent's still got a full hand, got a really good-sized board, the last thing you want to do is lay Magnetic Smash. The last thing you want to do is, like, I deal three damage to you and I heal for two. Costed me two cards to do, probably two healing cards or defensive ones. And then it's like, okay, cool, now I'm probably dead. I'd make it a three and use it to pay for something better. I mean, I 1.5 is fine. That's where I'm putting this 1.5. I'm sticking with my gut. Basement cuts. Hello, welcome. By the way, um, but yeah, I'd I'd say it's a 1.5. Based on all the stuff that I've been seeing and all the stuff that just going through my head, if you're low on health and your opponent's gonna kill you, you don't want to lay a combo that deals three damage and two healing, especially with your healing cards, your healing and defensive cards. If you're low on health, use them to heal or defend. You really use this card when you're um, when you're not being threatened and your healing cards are becoming dead cards in your hand. Then this becomes, yeah, I'll deal 9 damage with my healing cards if I'm not taking any damage. Sure, no problem. Like, that's that's where I see this card coming into play. And if that's the only case, then there are other better, there are better ones. There are better ones. Hyper Rewind. 
three time. As we've been seeing, time is probably the most sought after element out there right now. Move up to two discarded action buffs into play. Rotate them two steps forward. Now, mind you, you can choose the two action buffs you put into play. Then you rotate them two steps forward. Not just the top two or anything like that. Hyper Rewind, guys. Gets five stars. Gets five stars. I'm basing that fact on the fact that, guys, did you know that Reality Twister is an astral combo? That you legitimately had to pick the top three d action buffs and put them into play? And then you got initial action before they nerfed it to just having draw a card? This... Is three three time, which mind you, time is the utility easy to pay for, in my opinion. Um, you get to choose reality rift. Thank you, Rocketstar. Not reality. Uh, I, what I don't even know what I said anymore. But you get to choose which action buffs you put into play. Then you rotate them two steps forward. Put this in a really fun deck. You can put no, oh, okay. Put two main ships into play. Boom, fourteen damage. Reality twister. Thank you. Yeah, it's that's completely wrong. It's you literally get to choose. Which buffs, so you can lay this at any time. You don't have to stack your discard pile. You don't have to do anything. You put them into play. Then you put them two steps forward. So if you choose two proper buffs that just have some insane damage, yeah, Hyper Rewind can be used defensively to, like, you know, heal you for a big thing. It can be used offensively to spin some stuff forward and kill your opponent. Hyper Rewind can be used in so many different ways. And yes, it costs three time to pay for, but you're going to have so much time in your deck because, like I said, time is one of probably the best elements to splash in or even use right now in tech. That this is a five-star combo. This is a five-star because it has potential of being an OTK or has potential of just killing your opponent from probably over half health. It's really good. You can utilize this when you have like, oh, you know, you increase your damage by like, you know, two for this turn. Boom. Slam two buffs into place, spin them forward. Awesome. I will love that. Yeah, 16 damage. There's there's buffs out there that have a, a XX8, something like that. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's a common. Like, they, they almost don't even care about rarity anymore. I gave a lot of my higher rating stars to the commons than I did the rares. Yeah, Hyper Rewind is a five-star combo. This card is nuts. And it's one element, so if you splash in time, which I said is probably the best one to splash in right now, with all of the manipulation that time has and all the stuff that time has as well, Hyper Rewind is going to be a very easy combo to splash into any color and just go bonkers with it. This is going to be nuts, and I cannot wait to see what kind of synergies people pull off with Hyper Rewind. But it's it's going to set up for those combo damaging like OTK style decks. Frag Shell Armor. It's essentially our new nuke, right? We took out time and put in another explosive for that. Um, corners one, two, and three reduce damage received, and corner four is damage to your target. Yeah. Why not? Some of the best buffs we're seeing right now are the, uh, overwhelming blast, the, uh, the two explosive combo buff that's five, four, three, two. There's even the new, uh, two explosive, one mechanical, eight damage, mill your opponent for three. Um, that fits really fell under, under Frag Shell Armor. Frag Shell Armor already pays for some of the best really aggressive combos out there. And now it's just a 17 damage combo buff. This this is really good. I think this deserves a 4 star rating. This is a 4 star rating. This this card can easily be used in um, cross order decks that only have used to like explosive like Halvar or something like that. They just splash in mechanical. To run flag shell armor, just to just to use it for some reason. Um, whoop, I don't know what I did. Um, there we're finding another hero, which I will come down to uh, shortly. That it literally deals one damage to you to spin a combo forward. You can spin this thing forward. I already said there's a nice little way to meet an OTK that runs uh, nuke frag shell armor and uh, steel fortification. Cause with um, that's why I said if you if you run the mechanical item. Yes, you can, Mud Turtle. With the other combo, if you deal damage to yourself, you can rotate an explosive combo. Back one. So 17. Rotate it back. Another 17. Yep. Frag Shell Armor is going to be seen. Nuke is still going to be seen, too. Um, oh, no problem, Rocket Star. But yeah. Like, there, this card, along with Nuke, like, I don't see why you wouldn't run this and Nuke in a deck that ran that other combo where you could just find a 17 damage combo. 
or 17 damage buff that had explosive in it where you could just manipulate it. Just manipulate it, rotate it back, rotate it, rotate it back, rotate it. It's just, yeah, tech is going to be nuts. Tech is going to be really fun. Nuke is better because it removes all their buffs. Sure. Um, but, I mean, they're both good. They're both fine. If you're if you're pulling a deck like that, you're going to be running both, right? If they kill Nuke, cool, Nuke's gone. Fragile armor, here we go. Like... They can't remove every single one, can they? But, uh, yeah, like an OTK to set up for it is um, first turn, steel fortification. Put that out. Second turn, you... Where are you? Higgs Fusion. Higgs Fusion. Move two valid combo buffs from your hand into play. So, steel fortification is on this corner. You put into play uh, nuke, and you put into play frag shell armor. So, next turn, Steel Fortification is on three. They both have mechanicals, so you can't remove them. Then there's the new hero, Clock Smasher Crud. Take one damage, rotate one of your combo buffs one step forward. You rotate either Frag Shell Armor or Nuke one step forward. So, they're both. So basically, the, the turn you do this, Steel Fortification is on this. Nuke and Frag Shell Armor are on this corner. Clock Smasher Crud moves one of them to this corner. So, next turn... One of them hits for 17. Then Smasher Crud rotates the other one for 17. That's 34 damage. All their buffs have been removed if you do nuke first. Then you just do another action to kill them. Yeah, it requires like four of your combos. But we've already seen OTK decks in tech that require you all five combos. So, like, it's not unheard of. It can be really fun to do. They're both too strong. Storm got one that potentially deals 20. I don't care that it does 17. I don't care. Like, you're not going to run Frag Shell Armor in an aggro deck. That's just overkill. You're going to want to run the attacks in an aggro deck. Frag Shell Armor is not going to fit in every deck, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, much, you could you could buff out or uh, bait out the buff removal the entire time. That's fine. Like, Vine Lash is one, that, in my opinion, Vine Lash, I think, needs to get rotated out soon because it just goes in every nature deck ever. There's no reason not to run Vine Lash in every nature deck. There's no reason not to. Spatial Dilution. Now, this is a combo you build a deck around. As the centers play, heal for six. Already instant impact. I love it. When you deal damage to yourself, instead deal that much damage to your target. Yeah. Yeah, this goes in a deck where it's like a lot of micro damage to yourself. Spinning stuff forward, spinning stuff backward. Hey, I'll put a crumbling tower into play. Cool, seven damage to you, and then seven damage to me. Oh, wait, no, it's back to you. A lot of stuff like that. The spatial dilution is just you build a deck around spatial dilution. And because there's so many ways to build combo buffs, like to get combo buffs back, to do all the stuff like Time Worm and all that ridiculous stuff, that spatial dilution, you're going to get that thing back. You're going to lay it again. You're going to do really fun synergies as well. Um even Maniacal Machine. Like, Maniacal Machine, you let that thing rotate out. Three damage to me. Oh, no, wait, it's to you. Sorry. Like, there's so many cards in tech that deal a lot of heavy hitting damage to you that now with Spatial Dilution, all that extra damage just goes back to your opponent. And it's almost overwhelming if they don't remove this. Right? Like, they want to save their buff removal for Spatial Dilution, but at the same time, the buffs on board are what you're really utilizing to kill them. Just Spatial Dilution is an extra bonus. Spatial Dilution just kills them faster. Um, I love it. This is a lot better than Contra Bubble. I think this card gets a uh, 4.5. It's a 4.5 because you do build a deck around this one. You do build that damaging deck around Spatial Dilution. You do probably build it to bring back Spatial Dilution as well. Um, but the thing is, the deck that you're running should still be able to kill them without Spatial Dilution. Spatial Dilution just helps you kill them faster. If you get this out, it just builds up tempo faster. It's not the card that kills them. It's the card that kills them faster is how that should work in your deck. Because um, if you're if you're banking on Spatial Dilution to kill them, if you don't have this out, you are going to be killing yourself faster because you need to keep pace with your opponent. And the only way to do this is to lay the cards that are dealing damage to you and therefore you kill yourself. Without Spatial Dilution, without the 1 of 35 cards, you're losing that game unless you draw it right away. So it's a 4.5 where, yes, you build the deck around it. It makes the deck work a lot better, and it's really big tempo swing. Uh, but it's it's not what wins you the game. It's what helps you win the game faster. Spatial Dilution I like a lot. 
It might even just be a four star, but 4.5 because it's so much better than Contra Bubble. So much better. And it's a consistent combo buff, which means all those buffs out there prior to it that said if you have a combo buff in play, beginning of your turn, do something extra. Like, Spatial Dilution is was made along with... Uh, along with matter manipulation, th those two combos were made with the intent to utilize all of the, if you have a combo buff and play cards. And I love it so much the tech is getting back into that because you can finally lay buffs in tech again. You can finally lay buffs in tech again. <sighs> it just feels so good to say. It feels so good to say that you can finally lay buffs in tech again. But yeah, I do think this is like a 4.5. It's better than Fragile Armor. Because uh, Fragile Armor is just like, you know, you play the long game, play Fragile Armor, do its OTK thing. Spatial Dilution goes into a deck that was never really brought to fruition. And now with this one combo, that deck now feels like a viable deck. It brings a deck that was kind of a meme into, hey, this could work now. That's why it gets that extra point five to me. Clock Smasher Crud. Superior in time. Now the best one. Oh, Foil Spatial Dilution. Yeah, all these cards Foil are going to look amazing, I think, Final Ross Battle. I think they're going to be awesome. Uh, Clock Smasher Crud, Superior in Time. Probably the best one right now to have, because uh, now it has buff removal. Awesome. Ability, take one damage, you may rotate one of your combo buffs forward. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right? Th this is the hero that you build a deck around to utilize his ability. This is a hero that's going to be busted with all of the stuff. This is a hero that I literally just explained how to make an OTK deck in tech with this hero alone. This hero manipulates combo buffs, which is unheard of until now. And it's a hero ability. Mind you, without that, without that, his hero ability could just say take one damage. Take one damage. Oh, okay, I'll go ahead and take a damage. And then spatial dilution or matter manipulation will make me want to re or rotate back my... Uh, uh, explosive stuff. Just taking one damage on an ability is better than dealing one damage with this guy. This is so much fun. Does the damage happen first? Yeah, the, you take one damage to d then rotate it. So you take the damage, then you rotate it. This guy is so good. This guy is bonkers nuts. Like, Alara, I think I gave Alara like a 4, 4.5. Clock Smasher Krug gets a 5. Because he directly directly rotates combo buffs. And on top of that now, Tech has really flushed out the whole you want to take damage to yourself to really get a benefit. And his ability is literally just take one damage. That ability, the first sentence, the first sentence is probably going to be utilized a lot more in games than the rotating your combo buffs. Like, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah, here's what, you, here's what you can do, if you guys weren't wondering. Um, Matter Manipulation, when you deal damage yourself, rotate one of your explosive buffs one step backward. So it's on 17. Deal one damage to myself. Okay, I'll rotate Frag Shell Armor backward. Now you can rotate a combo buff one step forward. Okay, I'll rotate that forward. Sure. Yeah. That's 34 damage in one turn just with Frag Shell Armor on Clock Smasher Crud. That's why you run this in Nuke. Because both of those considered 34 damage. Then if you lay a comp, or uh, uh, for some reason they're not dead, you still have one more action. Yeah, you still have one more action. So then you go ahead and lay a spark, you lay a Scrapworks Bruiser. Six damage to them. If that doesn't kill them, if they had like a huge wall that is now blown away. Six damage, two damage to yourself. Rotate Frag Shell Armor back one. So they have another 17 damage. Then Clock Smasher Crowd again. Next turn. Like, if they can't do anything, Clock Smasher Crud ends games with Frag Shell Armor or Nuke. All on his own. All on his own. That'll be hard to pull off, but possible. That's where you run things like the Giga Blender to heal you for 10. That's where you run things that just, you just draw cards, you bait out buff removal, you do everything you can to get to the late game. Because this, this is not, this is not just an aggro or tempo. You play heal, you play stall until the end when you kill them for like 60 in one turn. That's This is the OTK. This is the OTK deck. It's going to feel like a stall deck until you get hit with the OTK. Because all you do is you turtle up until you get those combos out. 
and then you OTK them. That's it. That's all you do. And with his, you could potentially like lay the the lay the frag shell next turn, clock smasher crud, so it's on its third corner. And right there, that's three turns instead of four, you get to pull it off. Because then it'll 17, clock smash your crud again, restart it back. And you yes, you do have to have mana manipulation out with the frag shell armor. But as we discussed, getting combos back these days is not that difficult. It's really not that difficult. He's a five-star hero. He's He's got a deck already thought out by, by me and everyone else out there. And you're going to see it and you're going to be like, oh, God, it's clock smash your crud. All right, I got it. I got to kill him fast. I got to just, I got to do something to kill him fast. And it's going to be difficult because that's just the OTK version. You could just build a matter manipulation and use his ability to rotate other uh, explosive buffs. You could just use it with Colossi Cannon to take one damage, rotate it back one. Boom, boom, boom. All this stuff. Like, it's just, oh, it's so good. Time to build that Adam Arc Moss deck. Do it. Do it, Basement Cuts. Mech Builder Rixar can carry one additional point of item, so he's taking over for Lexi. And he's the mechanical one, so you can use the wrench juggler to bring your items back. Awesome. Uh, when you deal damage to yourself, you may equip an item from your hand. Well, that's bonkers. Uh, we've already seen pretty much every single hero that can hold three items be a viable hero in tournament format, in ranked format. So that already makes me want to give him a 3.5 just on the fact that he can hold three. Now it says when you deal damage to yourself, you may equip an item from your hand. You can equip two items in one turn with him. That's, I mean, that's just without Tantosian. That's without Tantosian. If you start, you remove a buff. Cool, two damage to yourself, remove two, put an item into play for one action card. Any, as long as it's in your hand, any card that deals damage to you becomes essentially a Tantosian Blacksmith. As long as the item is in your hand, any item or any card that deals damage to yourself becomes a Tantosian Blacksmith. Which you might say, oh, that's not that good. But with how much card draw that the time order has with Blastfield Battery, with the Tyrax Historian, with everything like that, card draw is actually really easy to find. With three items, yeah, that's going to be really fun to do. Mech Builder Rixar, I think, gets about a four-star rating, maybe even 4.5, just because of how strong carrying three items are with the Umbron Salvager is. That's nuts. And he already has come equipped with the Wrench Juggler to bring back items from his discard pile. I think Tech is one of the only phones that has that four items. Mud Turtle have a good one. That, yeah, I'd say I'd say four, maybe even 4.5, just because he can hold three and Umbron Salvager is a thing. Eight damage on an action card is nuts. And any hero that can use that to its best is awesome. So Mech Builder Rexar taking over for Lexi, I think I think is a 4.5. 4.5. There's you're gonna build a specific deck with him. It's gonna be probably aggro like all the other ones were. But I like it. I like it a lot. He's gonna be a very fun hero to play with. Mud Turtle, awesome. We'll have fun with hockey. You can check these later then. Uh Colax the Historian. Superior and explosive. Not bad. Ability, discard the top card of your deck. If the discarded card was a combo, deal 5 damage to your target. Otherwise, deal 2 damage to your target. This cannot be increased by effects. <sighs> Gotta step it my keyboard. This, this is a 1.5 star hero. The only reason he gets 0.5 is because he's a explosive uh, supremacy. So he just goes into aggro. But there is no reason whatsoever where discarding the top card of your deck outside of Astral is ever going to be a good thing. Ever going to be a good thing. Because the cards you're going to discard in a deck with Explosive Mastery are 9 out of 10 times going to be an attack card that deal more than 2 damage or a combo card that deals more than 5. Like, no. Could he blend with Astral and be okay-ish? Basement cuts, I would say no. Because Astral really utilizes the top card of the discard pile, but it utilizes it in a sense where you need all three orders of Astral. 
you really utilize all three orders of Astral. Because it's like, oh, I want a, a Lunar on top to do like a Pathfinder bonus, or I want a Solar for a Dusk Creator bonus. Like, that's where that comes into play. For tech, I see no reason why discarding the top card of your deck could be used with Cursed Grave. We've seen so many cards now that discard cards, specific ones from your hand. I just... I, I do not see this guy ever being better than any other hero. I don't. I really don't. There's no reason... Discarding the top card, a card that you don't know what it is, to deal, on average, two damage, is going to be good. I do not know. Yeah, he's just like the Mountain Hero. The Mountain Hero was discard a rant, the top card to heal for two. Like, to heal for two. That's Mountain Aspect. That's Earth. Earth is the healing one. He's explosive. Explosive is the damaging one. This is essentially deal two damage. Like, I don't understand in any way, shape, or form how this hero's ability is going to be good. With all the card draw tech has to build up your hand and all the aggro stuff the tech has to do its thing, I don't know why you would want to mill the top card of your own deck intentionally. Like, if it said, draw the top card of your deck, then discard it. You know, if it said, draw it, because then you could utilize this ability with the, um, the, um, what am I looking for? The Rust Forge Assembly, right? You could use it with the Rust Forge Assembly. You could draw the card, and then, like, it would come into play if it was, if it was a top card. But it's just like, you could discard Creebles to that one buff, Stomper. You could, if you knew it was a Kreeble. Otherwise, we have several other Kreeble cards that utilize, also synergize well with robots to use with Stomper. There's the one Kreeble card that says discard a Kreeble card from your hand to draw two cards. That's two Kreeble cards right there for one action. Like, it's much better to choose which card you're going to pick. Yeah, I mean, for right now, he's like a one-star hero. He's like a one-star hero that... For all we know, in the set past Uprising, there's cards in tech that say if this was discarded from your deck, deal something. Like, if there could be stuff like that that really benefit from the discard mechanic. But right now, outside of Dread, we did not get a whole lot of cards that benefit from the discard mechanic. We got, to think, one. One hero that does really well with beasts. And then one that's like, if this card is discarded, deals two damage. But... Colax the Historian... I would never use over any other tech hero that has explosive mastery. Never. I don't understand why I would want to mill myself. I don't understand it. Not one bit. He's a point five. but we need a way to set. You're not wrong. Guys, thank you for listening to the tech. We'll be right back. <laughs> 